All right, guys. Well, welcome once again to the Maximum Performance Webinar Series. My name is Eric Genesco. I am the uh, head coach and CEO here at Maximum Acceleration. And uh, today's program, we're going to be talking about the September surge, your keys to success through the fall program. And, and Coach Jen DePlessis is going to be walking us through her uh, more than 30 years of mortgage experience and building and running large teams and managing even national sales manager for a couple of years in there. Uh, and what she learned uh, about how to create strategic growth and make sure that that growth is taking place proactively versus reactively. Obviously, Jen is, is one of our best coaches, one of my uh, long time becoming great friends and somebody I have the highest and utmost respect for in her knowledge, her skill set, and her ability to share information in a great way. Uh, so without further ado, Jen, if you want to go ahead and take it and run, um, I'll be here just kind of for back-end support, but uh, I'm excited to hear what you have to share with the group today just as much as our audience, I hope, is. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. Well, hi, everybody, and thank you so much for taking time today to uh, visit with us and allow us to share um, some ideas with you. Um, you know, we brought, we brought the September surge together. Uh, you know, now it's the end of September. We had a little delay on getting this out, but uh, now um, it's at the end of September. But the whole idea here is that uh, Eric and I were chatting, and what we were talking about one day was that, uh, you know, I'm already planning for 2017, and the people that I'm coaching and the people that I talk to, I'm amazed that everyone isn't already in that mindset. So I'm already in that mindset of saying, you know what, um, we're, we're getting to the finish line. It's the last quarter of the game. You know, it, as of October 1st, we'll be in the last quarter. So the activities that you're doing today are going to bring you the results that you'll have in the first quarter of the year. So waiting until January to implement things is um, going to affect your ability to achieve your goals next year. So that was the whole purpose of this is just to say, let's get, let's get together and talk about what you need to be thinking about um, for next year. So, Eric, hopefully you'll help me. I had said this morning I do not want to talk more than a half an hour today. Uh, the rest of the half hour, I want to open up for questions. I want to get as much information out. So get your questions rolling in now as quickly as you possibly can uh, so that we make sure that we answer your questions moving forward. Um, all right, so we're going to start um, with what I'm, what I'm sharing with you today. Uh, again, we're at the finish line, and the whole idea here is to start compassing out your success for next year. What I'm going to share with you is an acronym called LAUNCH. And LAUNCH is um, leverage, action, utility, needs, credibility, and habits. And this is something that I teach um, and coach all the time. Now, here's the key thing, the people that I coach, here's the key thing to this. What I'm about ready to present to you is what you can present to your realtors. We've talked about how do we get these realtors and ourselves out of the mindset that this is the lull period in business. I have to tell you that some of my best months are in the months of November and December, and that's because I don't have a mindset that this is a lull. For me, this is a ramp up time. This is the time that we need to get rocking and rolling for next year to ensure that we're going to have utter and complete success. So this presentation is going to be available to you so that you can take this out to your realtors and try to spark their uh, business throughout these, these last uh, three months to get them ramped up as well. So we want to call this, um, you know, we're calling this launch, which is to launch your business into 2017. Okay? So let's go ahead and move on to some a couple other things. This um, is people's business. I'll be honest. It's a roller coaster, right? We have peaks and valleys and I, I mean sometimes when I look at this picture I actually get a little queasy because it makes me sick to think that people are living through this. Um, but you know rolling and turning and twisting and upside down and everything and what we want to do is we want to smooth out these lines and that's the whole purpose of identifying immediately what do we need to be doing to um, be successful next year. So part of that is in the first, in the first uh, stage of this, and I'm going to talk just for a minute about this. The first stage of this is um, identifying where you're at now. And you hear this all the time. Um, you know, you don't know where you're going. and You, can't, you don't know where you're going to go unless you know where you're, you're at now. And I, I'm probably paraphrasing that, right? Um, badly, poorly. <laughs> um, but in order to identify where you're going to go next year, you have to really understand where you're at today. So if you close, let's say 
you close 12 loans this year. I hope that's not the case, but let's say you close a total of 12 loans this year. Then it's really very unrealistic for you to say that next year you're going to close 12 loans per month. Okay? Our goal is to get you there as coaches and um, identify where that one or two areas, um, the one or two areas are that you might need a help to be able to get there. But it's we want to be careful not to set our goals so unrealistic, and you've all heard of the SMART process of setting goals, you know, being specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and on a timeline. They need to be realistic. So um, wherever you are now, in order to go to that next level, you have to identify where you're at now. That's one. Two is identifying where have you been getting your business from. Have you been getting your business um, all from realtors, all from online, or have you been sort of riding this tide of refinances and you're wondering, gosh, what am I going to do next year when the refinances go away, you know, given that the feds are going to most likely increase interest rates in December, which, by the way, will lower our interest rates. Um, and we need to make sure we get that word out. But the, um, you want to identify where have you been uh, getting your business and you know, moving forward, can you continue to get your business from there? You, well, you have to do some adjustments. Uh, so that's one of the first things that you want to do. So we're going to walk through, um, like I said, I want to do this as quickly as possible because I, I just want you to understand it. So when you're presenting this to a real estate agent, you say, hey, is this your business? Roller coaster of love. Um, this might be their business and we, you want to be there to help them. So let's talk about leveraging. The first thing about leveraging is that um, you know, we are one-man bands in our industry. Uh, we do everything. And the key for you is to leverage everyone around you. So um, it's, it's your processor. It's an assistant if you have one. It's a virtual assistant if you have the ability to do that. Um, it's one of your kids getting them involved in putting packages together. The idea is to leverage as many people as you possibly can. And honestly, in a half an hour of time, I can't really go into everything about um, the leveraging and the team building that you need to do. I have a, a very large team. It's very successful, and I have all A players. Um, but some of you may be just doing everything right now, and that's fine. But where could you leverage? And ask your realtors this when you're presenting to them as well. Where, where could they leverage and sort of um, outsource some of these activities that you're doing? Because really what you want to be is the conductor. You want each individual person to be playing their part and doing a really, really good job at it. You want to be overseeing and conducting and seeing what's happening um, with that. If that conductor had walked down and played the flute position and then the this position, you can see that the sound and the music doesn't sound cohesive. And that really is what happens with us sometimes in our businesses that we're tasked with doing one thing and then dropping that and going to the next because we're pulled from all angles to do um, DU or answer phone calls or solve a problem or do a presentation or go on a one-to-one -one meeting. Um, so the key here is, can you imagine if this race car driver got out of the car and said, hey, I got this. I got this. I can change the tires and do all this. How long would it take him to do that? So leveraging is really, really critical. And I, I love sharing Frank Sinatra because do you think he moved his own pianos? from place to place because he only played one piano? And the answer is no. So I just want you to think about leveraging as you're moving forward. What areas could you leverage and outsource and utilize your team and people around you a little bit better? So that's the first thing. Think about everything you do. Emails, planning the day, keeping in touch, frequently asked questions. Um, that's something we could talk about. Uh, bookkeeping, payroll, phone calls, phone calls, prospects, learning products, product research, running errands, mentoring, doing mailers, returning phone calls, calls and meetings and referrals and pop buys and networking. I'm just tired looking at all this. There's a lot of things that we do. So look at each one of those things that you're doing and see if you can segment them into different categories and try to outsource some of those um, items to leverage them so that you're focused on what you do best. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment as well. That's what delegation is, allowing other people to do some of the activities that are not high-yielding activities for you. So what should you delegate? You should delegate anything uh, what you don't know how to do. You know, if you don't know how to analyze tax returns, delegate it. Don't try to fuss with it and make it 
uh, you know, try to shove it in and try to make it work and then at the end have to, you know, a loan that you don't um, have the exact numbers on. Um, what you're not good at. Anything that you're not good at. You might be okay at doing something, but you probably want to outsource that or give that to someone else. What doesn't directly generate money? That's really key. I see a lot of loan officers spending, um, I just was coaching someone the other day, um, and she has spent, um, I think she told me, like uh, $350 a month for six months uh, to get Facebook at, or to get at um, online advertising. And she was supposed to get 30 leads a month, and it was, she was three weeks in and had only received two, and they didn't convert. So that doesn't make money sense to me. For $350, I can take three clients to dinner and really solidify some relationships and get four referrals out of that. So don't do what doesn't make money sense. Um, what's falling through the cracks? You know, as uh, super loan officers, we always feel that we can do it the best, right? But sometimes if you're doing too many activities at one time, your best isn't 100%. Your best drops down to 30 or 40%. So hire someone who can do it 80%, and quite frankly, it's better than you can do it, even though you think you could. So when you have time, of course, you could do it better. But right now, if things are falling through the cracks because you don't have time to get to it and you keep sliding in and pushing on to the next day's to-do list, that's something that needs to be delegated and outsourced. And then something you just don't have time for. You, you flat out don't have time to do it. Um, a weekly networking group, if you're just going there and you're rushing and it's havoc and you get there and you just don't do a great job at it um, because your mind is someplace else, you're not present, don't do it anymore. So those are great things that you can do. So I call this the trinity of success. Um, this is what you are good at, what you like to do, and what makes money sense? If you can remember these things, so remember, if we're planning for the year, and we're saying, okay, this is where we've been this year, these are my numbers, these are the sources I got business, um, and you're thinking about next year, then think about the things that you beat your head against the wall and said, I just oh, I hate doing it. If you're tracking properly, you will know what those results are. And that's part of what coaching is, is that we're your accountability part partner in helping you track these things. If you have done 50 broker opens for realtors and it's yielded no loans, then my suggestion is cease and desist. Stop doing broker opens. Ask yourself, is this something I'm good at? And do I really like doing that? Do I like lugging in all the food and all that stuff? And does it make money sense? Because if it's not generating um, a result, then don't do it. I'll give you another example um, on uh, tax returns, for example. Um, I'm really good at tax returns. I can analyze them. I used to be an underwriter. I can analyze them like nobody's business. But I don't like to do it anymore, and it doesn't make money sense. It makes sense for someone else on my team who's just as good at it to be taking care of that, that particular activity. So ask yourself these three questions every time. And you know the other um, gosh, that's a whole other presentation on values, but identifying just three values that you have, you know, what are your values and does anything that you are thinking about doing next year, does it align with your values? Because if it does, your principles, values and principles, that your line in the sand, things that are really important to you, if it doesn't align with those, then don't do them. Just because you saw someone else do it doesn't mean you need to add it to your process, your business plan. So I'm going to talk about that right now. Um, so the dream team, I was talking about this before. So I call people finders, minders, and grinders. As loan officers, we are finders. That is our primary job, to be finding the business, um, to be um, you know, going out and the CEO of the business. We're the rainmaker, the gatekeeper, the business development officer. That's our primary role. And I know that a lot of you are doing all of these functions, and that is certainly fine. That's where I started as well. But remember that this is the most important. Finding the business is the most important. It doesn't matter that your card is cute. It doesn't matter that the flyer is perfect. It matters that you get out and you talk about these things so that you can generate business. It's all about lead generating. The minder is someone who takes care of the business. So um, is your uh, assistant or your processor. They're doing customer service and they're ma managing the sales process and flow. Um, 
again, you might be doing that as well. It's just if you can compartmentalize these activities, you will find that you will have much more um, uh, volume coming in rather than dabbling in each one of them. Again, it's really hard for me to discuss all this stuff in 20 minutes, but these are things that when you're presenting this to the realtor, you can help them understand that, you know, sales time is sales time, and then you'll mind the loan later, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and then you'll grind. You'll do your grinding. I see so many people um, doing administrative duties, budgeting, uh, minimum wage activities, nine to five. And you should be doing that stuff outside of business, outside of business hours. So hopefully that is clear as mud, and I'm sure you'll have questions on that as well. Um, so let me get back to this. So um, I want to talk about um, less is more. And this is where you have, um, I'm trying to get out of this little guy thing. Here we go. Um, it costs money not to have an assistant. I have to tell you that. Uh, I know I hear a lot of people saying, um, you know, that once I get, when this happens, then I will. And once I, you know, once I produce enough volume, then I will. Generally, you're going to need an assistant when you're to four to five loans a month. Um, maybe five to seven, depending on the size of your loans, but you're going to need an assistant. It actually costs you money not to have an assistant. Um, and the easy numbers on this is, why am I having, sorry everybody, I'm having a hard time with this thing because I engaged with it and now I don't want to have it. There we go. So it's a replication ratio. It's a one to five ratio. So if you're making, uh, if you're worth $20, or if you can pay someone $20 an hour, and you earn $100 an hour, then imagine what you can earn when you have that extra 20 hours a week, that you're, that you're not doing those activities. So if you can pay someone else less than what you earn, and so this is where we get back to business planning for next year is, how much did you make? If you closed 12 loans, and you worked really, really worked, 40 hours a week, okay, that will tell you how much you're worth per hour. Um, but if you only work 30 really doing sales activities, then, uh, and that's where you need to segment this, is how much sales time did you have, not how much babysitting of loan time, how much returning emails and that kind of thing. But if you do that and you find out that you're worth two, three hundred dollars an hour, that means that any activity that doesn't, that wouldn't normally pay that kind of money should be delegated to someone else. Um, it's funny, I, uh, so that extra, that extra 20 hours is paying someone 400, but you earn 2,000 if you're worth $100 an hour. I actually pay someone to shop for me now uh, because it's not worth me at my time. If I want a $40 shirt and I'm going to drive there, go shopping, I guarantee you I won't buy $40 worth of a $40 shirt. I'll end up spending $100 at the store plus the time. So for me, it's worth it. Pay someone $20, go buy the $40 shirt, and I've only spent $60, and while they're shopping, I've earned another $2,000 by closing another deal. That makes sense to me. So it's about taking action. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, who can we leverage? How can we outsource? And, and then what action am I going to take? Because this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where so many loan officers fail. They do a business plan sometimes. And then they put it into a cabinet, and it gets dust, and they never act on it. They just go back to doing everything the same way. So action is really, really key. So the first thing I want to share with you is a marketing calendar. Um, identifying now the marketing. Um, what am I going to do in January, February, March, April, May, every single month? How much is it going to cost? So you can see that what I've laid out here is an example you know, January, what your goals are for transactions, how many phone calls you need to make. But more importantly is, how many referrals do you want? How many do you want to give? Whoop, did I do that or did you do that? I did do that? There we go. I don't know what happened. There we go. How many referrals do you want to give? What is your theme for the month? You know, thinking about why would you call people? What are the some of the reasons that you'd be doing it? And what activities are you going to have? This this shiny object syndrome that we have in our business, we are, you know, we think we're ADD, but we're not. We're, we're making ourselves ADD by trying to multitask or, um, I don't even call it multitasking, it's just, it's uh, task switching. We switch tasks constantly. Um, so if you're watching this, 
and you're sort of listening to me and sort of returning phone calls and sort of, um, or not returning phone calls, but sort of returning emails and reading something while you're watching me, you are task switching. And it's been scientifically proven that that's equivalent to you um, being on pot, smoking. So it's actually worse. Uh, so if you're going to run around all day and do multitasking, um, then you're operating your practice um, while you're on drugs, quite frankly. So it's much better for you to identify in the very beginning, what can I do next year? You know, if Joe in your office had some bowling party and you think it's a really cool idea, you need to be looking at it now in September, October, and November and identifying whether or not you can afford it, how can you get it pulled together, who would you invite. These are all things that you need to be thinking about now and not in January. Um, so having these systems, because that is a system, it saves yourself sanity, time, energy, and money. Um, having these systems will help you uh, calm down, be able to compartmentalize the finder, minder, and grinder pieces, because you'll know exactly what your tasks are later on. It will help you delegate as well, because now they know what you're wanting them to do. So if you have a marketing assistant, you can have the entire marketing plan given to them in January and say now go out and make sure it gets implemented um, with my you know with your assistance so let's talk about utility as well this is the U in launch um, it's an economic term referring to the total satisfaction received from consuming a good or service so in utility there's some things that you want to be looking at how can I improve my my strategy in what I'm doing it has um, this strategy of going down the road of Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook or social media, yeah, because everybody says you should do it, should you do it. I have to tell you guys, I post, well, first of all, I don't post. I let my grinder post. I post twice a week some kind of article, and I don't even know what it says because I hardly go on to Facebook. And yet I close 15 to 22 loans a month, you know. Um, so I don't even use it. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, if, that, if you think that's something that's valuable. But look at that strategy and see if it's, if it's worth it. Should you improve it? Could you do something different with it? Or should you get rid of it altogether? So that's one thing you want to do. The second thing is you want to maximize efficiencies. If you say that you're going to post every day, how are you going to get that done? What are you going to do? So. Think about all the efficiencies of, is it possible that you could do all of the, the activities that you're laying out for yourself? How can you reduce the cost? Could you do something that, uh, could you prepare um, a bunch of posts and have them on a calendar to be done and just prepare them all, of them all of them at once? Or is it something you have to go in and do every single time? And I'm using posts as an example, but where else could you reduce costs? Uh, if you're doing those broker opens and it's not yielding anything, you can reduce costs there. Divert the money someplace else. And then lastly is what is your customer experience going to be like? Having a perfect loan process is so key and critical in this time and age in our lending business. You know, I've been in for now, it'll be 34 years in a couple months. And, um, you know, having a process is really, really key. The, now, the key to it is internally, it's a process and a system that's efficient. Externally, the client thinks they're the only one who's going through that process. So what do you want your customer experience to be like? And again, I'm going to go back to this. When we're done today, you can have this presentation. You're going to be asking the real estate agent the same thing. How can they improve the way they do things? maximizing efficiencies. Why are they going out and I wish you guys could see me full size. They go out and they push those crazy signs in the corner on the, you know, that they have an open house and that woman's out there trying to push it into the, the thing. You know, she should be paying someone else to do those things. So you want to help them on how they can reduce costs and cut and improve their customer service experience as well. So that gets us to resources. What are the resources you're going to use? Who are your referral partners? Where did you get the business this year? Do you think that you have an A plus realtor because they call you all the time, they're super nice, but you look at it and they actually didn't close anything with you? Then maybe they're not a referral partner, you know, or maybe you want to uh, find out what their volume is. You should, by the way. You need to know what their volume is. Um, because if, you're get, if you've gotten one loan this year, and that's all they've done, you know, that's great, you're getting 100% of their business, but 
Maybe you want to be working with someone who does five and get 50% of their business. So you need to think through that. You need to, um, this is why, again, coaching is so important because we help you um, go through this process. Who are your referral partners? Are you going to work with just realtors, builders, bank turndowns, um, commercial lenders, financial planners? Who are you going to work with? Again, outsourcing. Where can you outsource inexpensively? Fiverr, for example. F-I-V-E-R-R. Fiverr is unbelievable. They can put together a flyer for me for 10 bucks, and I don't have to do it. So love Fiverr. Should you get a virtual assistant? You can buy, uh, buy, sorry, you can pay for virtual assistants for, you know, two, four dollars an hour. Again, through Fiverr, um, there's another one, I can't think of the name, but if I do, I'll let you know what it is. But you can get a virtual assistant to do some of this little stuff. Um, it doesn't cost a ton of money. What associations do you want to join? How much are they going to cost? Are, are they going to ask you to sponsor? How much is that going to cost if you get the opportunity to sit in front of them? or stand in front of them in a, in a meeting. Um, tracking how many people are in there, how many um, are open to working with loan officers. So you want to look at that. You want to look at your advertising. Do you want to advertise? How do you want to advertise? Do you want to buy Facebook ads? Do you want to put ads in paper? Um, do you want to advertise in your local HOA, in your community? Um, there's a lot of fun things. Oh, I have something for you. Hold on. This is, this is, I just was talking about, this is just something that I did a couple years ago, um, talking about advertising. Um, this is a business director. This is from 2012. You can see this a couple years ago. And what I did is I put together um, a preferred list. That's basically what it is. So if you can see that, I um, sold advertising to my partners so that every time I sat down with a client, I could refer one of my partners for something. Um, so for... Uh, somebody who said they wanted to have uh, meet with um, Francesca about um, architecture and changing things, um, carpet people. So it was great because I could refer them. This was my great way of advertising. In fact, um, when I go marketing, I never bring a business card. I always bring this because they'll throw my business card away. This cost me all of $100 to put together. I charged everyone $35 to be in here. And I got about a thousand of these and I handed them out to everybody I met. So, you know, maybe something that you could use, you know, to do that as well. How do we get back here? So, um, sorry, uh, client surveys. Uh, really talking to, I know, look, at I'm on a roll. Uh, <laughs> client surveys. Um, how do you know your clients are happy? How do you know? Are you doing surveys on a regular basis? My company has a, a, a customer experience officer, a CXO. And he is involved in every deal. And every time we have a midstream uh, survey and we have a survey at the end, and he calls them and says, why did you say good things and why did you say bad things? He wants to know. So do you know how your clients are doing it? Do you want a survey so that you know how you're being perceived out there rather than what you think? Um, your competition is a great resource. What kind of products are they out there they're pitching? Um, I'm not a product pitcher, but I, I do want to know what my competition is doing. I want to meet with them because, you know, I, you never know if there's something they can't do. There might be an overlay. There might be a, a territorial, you know, a, um, area that they can't ha help you with. And nationally, you wouldn't believe the loans I get referred out of state that I can't do. So your competition is a great resource. Continuing education. Um, getting on as many webinars as you possibly can without being so much of a learner that you don't put anything into action. Okay, that's the key thing. And then last but not least is having a personal and a business coach and mentor. Really, really key. I have coaches, and I'm, and I'm doing, you know, lots of business, and I have a coach for myself. In fact, I've got several. I have a real estate coach. I have a mortgage coach. I have a life coach, and I have a personal coach. So I really believe in coaching. I think it's really, really important. So those would be your resources. Um, the needs. But I'll talk briefly about this. The end for needs is when you meet with people, you have got to assess their needs. You can't just go in and regurgitate things. This is just an example of a networking summary that I use. I'm happy to share it with you. Um, you know, every time, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, I have a servant's heart. And so when I'm meeting with someone, it's how can I serve them? It's not, I have this product, and this is me, and this is my company, and I can do all these wonderful things. It's what do you need, and how can I identify what you need? 
um, and how I can help your business grow. And through osmosis, I, my business will grow as a result of it. And so this one document is probably its own seminar on you know, how to conduct really, really effective um, business to business meetings and client um, conversations. But assessing their needs is going to be critical to you identifying um, what you want to put out there in the market next year. Credibility. Um, you've got to develop trust um, with your clients and uh, you know whether you do uh, video conferencing like this, I do this sometimes when I'm meeting with my clients. I meet with them face to face, I do webinars, but you've got to develop trust with people. Um, accountability is key. If you're going to do something, say you're going to do it. Um, again, we, we are knee jerk. It's a difference between reacting versus responding. Okay, we tend to react and not responsive, and that's the key difference in that in that accountability. Be a life learner. Read, read, read. Listen, listen, listen. Watch, watch, watch. Engage. Learn as much as you can about our industry and everything around us, so that you can be known as the expert in your market. Um, character. Just make sure that you treat everybody appropriately. Um, it'll come back to you tenfold, or not, or not. Um, again, being the expert. Are you a PhD in this business, or are you a practitioner? You know, do you know just enough to help with people with a few questions, or are you the doctor in this business? And in order to be the doctor, you've got to have a full, rounded education in our industry. And so obtaining a certified mortgage planner, um, the MBA uh, CMBs. Uh, I have a certification called Certified Divorce Lending Specialist. Um, and so I work a lot with a divorce attorney. So having that credibility and those little acronyms behind our name, just like realtors have, big, big, big thing. Big important thing. And lastly, you need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that you can do this. Our pro the problem in our industry is that top producers do nothing different than low producers. Top producers, one, actually do it and don't talk about it, and two, they do it consistently, all the time. Same thing over and over and over. And we track to make sure that what we're doing is getting results. So no, there's no magic pill. It's just that simple. Simple, simple. We have a business plan and we work it. So habits, old ways won't open new doors. You've got to change your habits. You've got to change your personal behavior. Um, you are in charge of your, um, I don't want to say it's pensions are gone. They're kind of laughable. Social Security, you're in charge of that destination. If you want to work until you're 90 years old at the pace you are, then knock yourself out and do it. But if you want to change things, you've got to change your habits. You're going to have to change some habits. Um, so part of that is just sharing with you what my day looks like. This is pretty typical of my day. Um, I work out and do daily affirmations in the morning. I organize my day. Uh, I do what's called first and tens. I make phone calls every day, and then I'm meeting with partners. I'm doing one-to-ones all day. I have lunch with somebody or do a networking event. I do one-to-ones or client meetings again, and then look at that. Not till 3 o'clock in the afternoon do I even think about doing customer service. That's when I'm going to do it. Um, and then I do daily reflection and, and whatever else I do, which Eric knows. I do a lot of stuff. But... Um, you know, the customer service will be done at the end of the day because when a client calls and says, hey, can you talk, you say, yes, could I call you back between the hours of 3 and 5? Not at 3, not at 3.15, 3.30 because that puts stress on you. But it, could I call you back between the hours of 3 and 5 when I'm in front of my computer and I can dedicate 100% of my attention and focus to serving you better? Would that be okay with you? Instead of, yeah, yeah, I can do it now. I'm about ready to walk into a meeting and saying, hold on to somebody while you're walking up to them. So that's part of the habits. And these are intentional intervals where you're, you're blocking the time and you're power working during those times. And you're, you're present. So I also do color coding. I think, you know, I don't want to talk a lot about that, but everything I do is color coded. I make sure that I have enough of business, enough of personal mixed in. I'm, I don't believe in balance, but I believe in making sure that um, I have all the personal time I need. But when I'm working, I'm working 100% focused without distractions, period. All right, so um, that's just how the intervals and coding looks like. So that looks kind of like my day, okay?
That's kind of what my day looks like every day. Notice the consistency. Notice that it's all the time. The patterns there for habits. The patterns there for um, you know making sure that I am covering all bases. The green is money. That's where I have money time. That's where I'm a minder or a finder. Um, the customer service is when I'm the minder. And then any blue time is when I'm a grinder. That's blueprint time. So I have those times in there as well. So you can do it. I know you can do it. Um, okay, so here's, here's one of my favorite quotes in the world, Les Brown. He says, if you'll do what is easy, your life will be hard. And that tends to be the habit of most loan officers. It's like, eh, you know, I don't want to sit down and do business planning. I don't want to have a coach. I don't want to develop habits. I don't want to learn. I don't want to get some designation. I don't want to be locked into this uh, block, time blocking. I don't want to do all that stuff. Well, the result is your business is hard. Your life is hard. You can't balance things. Your volume isn't where you want it. You're running around like a chicken with your head cut off and your hair on fire. But guess what? If you do what is hard first, your life will be super easy. And I firmly believe in that. So if you need a little help getting started on it, you can text the word SPARK to 66866, and I can be a virtual coach for you for um, about 14 days. You can kind of see how things go. But I'd love the opportunity to have a strategy session with you. I also want, uh, because I, I can go deeper into any one of these, um, I also want to tell you about my podcast. I have a podcast called Mortgage Lending Mastery. It's on, um, it's on your phone, iPod, cast. It's a little purple thing. You probably don't even know. It comes with your phone, your iPhone. If you're a, um, what is the other phone? <laughs> Android user. Uh, I think it's called Stitch. St there's a radio station called Stitch something. I don't know. Anyway, you can get it there. You can get it online. But just uh, you can Google it, Mortgage Lending Mastery, and um, listen to my podcast. You'll hear more about what I have to say. I go deeper in a lot of these um, different areas. But nothing is as good as talking to me personally because I can hone in on exactly what your issues are. Okay? So there's your September surge that takes us into that last quarter of the year. Again, go back and think about your past business. Know where you're at now to identify where you can go, and then consider the resources, the money, the time, the experience that you have to build, and your referral partners, to build a great business that gets on the ground running before the end of the year, before January 1st. And then the last thing is take this presentation to your realtors. They will love it. Call all of them and say, hey, look, how, how are you coming for next year? Oh, I haven't even been thinking about it. You know what? I wasn't either, but I'd love to share some ideas on how you can start thinking about next year because I want to help you make, be successful. So you can do presentations. You can have your own little class. I have a big class I'm doing on this on uh, November 9th. And, um, you know, offer this solution to them. I'm handing you and giving you something free that not only helps you but will help your realtors Continue to do business throughout this lull season that everyone thinks is out there. So let's open it up for questions because I'm so excited. I can't stand it. Um, and look at me. I'm always like this. I can't, get, I can't get all my stuff out because there's so much I want to talk about. So I hope there's yeah, some yeah, questions. It's like the yawning thing. Um, it, you know, your enthusiasm is just, you know, you can't help but catching a little bit of it as you listen to her. Uh, Jen, I'm going to ask you to jump back a couple of slides. So one of the questions that was posted was the color coding slide, and I don't know if people were trying to take screenshots of it or write down as fast as they could uh, some one? of the different categories. That, uh, I think it was one more back than that, the one that actually showed the different categories. Yep. Uh, um, if you could do that while I'm looking at some other questions. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, there were several questions that came through the chat throughout the course of the webinar about, you know, proactive versus reactive. How do we get the realtors to stop being so reactive? I mean, how many of the, uh, I mean, I think if you've been in this business more than a couple of years, you've probably begun to realize that realtors tend to fly by the seat of their pants all the time and that they tend to be in more of a lead receiver mode than a lead producer or lead generator mode. Uh, right. So how do you snap them out of that? <laughs> okay, well, uh, usually, yeah, usually it, when uh, me snapping out of them out of that is saying, bye-bye, I'm firing you, you're not, you know, you want to work with people that complement, not complex, right? Compl they complement your business, not complicate, right? So for me, if I'm working with a realtor that's like that, bye-bye, 
I just have to say goodbye to them. I, I don't have the time to have someone like that. If you've ever read the book, The Energy Bus by, I think it's John Gordon. Um, I'm an avid reader, so I can't remember all of the authors, but um, it's called The Energy Bus, and you know, you don't want vampires on your bus. They suck the life out of you. And that's really what these people do. I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm about being positive, moving forward, and getting the job done. So that's the first reaction I have is, why are you even working with them, right? But if you're not in a position where you say no and you're a yes woman, right? And this is the difference between, as a loan officer, the difference between you being someone who is on demand versus in demand. When you create a mindset for yourself that puts you in a position of being in demand, you can say no to people like this. But if you're going to be on demand and you're going to answer every phone call, be a cat on a marble floor, um, not divert people to 3 to 5 in the afternoon um, or whatever time frame you have. If you're going to be that person that's going to answer phone calls till midnight, um, then you're putting yourself in a position where you're saying, hey, I'm on demand. I am on demand. When you need me, I am there. And that's great. But boy, is it different when you can put yourself in a position of being in demand where you elevate yourself to a point of um, abundancy rather than, I'm trying to get myself on the screen here, abundancy rather than scarcity, where you're coming from the bottom up instead of the top down. Um, so my recommendation is if they're, if they're like that, I mean, I've even said this, I know it's a little cat crash, but, or cast. Um, I've said to someone, you know, who did this to you? Who did this to you? Why are you like this? And it's done in a fun way, but who did this to you? Who is that loan officer? I'm going to go beat him up. Because the reason they're reacting like that is because their past experiences with loan officers have been the exact same thing. We are reactive. We don't have our act together. We're running around like chickens with our head cut off. They don't trust us. So it really is a situation where you want to meet with them, sit down with them, and say, let's work on a relationship together and decide if we want to work together. You don't need to work with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You really don't. So... Um, I know some of those are, are more callous kind of responses, but I would, rat, I would say if someone is like that, uh, when the deal is done, sit down with them, talk about how that went, what role each of you played in it, and how, it could change, you, know, how you could work on it better um, in the future. If, in fact, you actually like this person, if, in fact, they actually do business, otherwise, just let them go. Does that help? Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. All right, so another question that came through here, Jen, as, as we were uh, watching through the questions, it, it, the question came through from Michael, uh, who said, as a brand new loan officer, having not done a, a deal yet, what would be your number one word of advice to finish the year strong and, and get started on a, on a great path for the next year? Uh, well, engage in coaching. <laughs> Listen to my podcast. Um, take me up on my texting thing because that will get you started. Um, you need to identify who you want to target. And I would say right now, between now and the end of the year, this is the perfect time. And I'm doing this with all my A pluses. So if you don't have A pluses, uh, A's, you know, you haven't identified your, um, um, uh, your referral partners in that cat kind of categorizing and you just have a list of names, get on the phone. Call them and say, hey, you know what, I am uh, Mr. You know, hey, Eric, it's Jen DePlessis. I met you at some networking event, this networking event. Uh, the reason for my call is that I wanted to, um, I'd love to sit down with you and find out what your goals are for next year and see where I can help and be, play a part in you reaching your goals. And by doing that, you're ask, when you sit down with them, you're going to be asking them, so what were your goals this year? Did you accomplish them? them? If you didn't accomplish them, what do you think went wrong? What do you think you're going to implement next year? And find some ways to kind of um, thread yourself and weave yourself into their business. Share with them this launch presentation, but, but weave yourself into their business um, and come again from a servant heart, from a giving heart, rather than from meeting with everyone and saying, i, I got to have another deal. I have to I need more business. You know, that, that's just silly. Um, so ramp up and um, book yourself silly. Book yourself silly to meet with everybody. Book yourself silly. Does that help, Michael? And I think that's, 
Absolutely. I, I think the other thing is just let the numbers work in your favor. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, whether you're the most experienced originator who's going to convert 10 out of 10 or the brand new guy who doesn't even have a clue how to spell mortgage, uh, you know, and you're only going to convert 1 out of 20, if you make 20 calls a day, you're going to get the one or two new opportunities every time. And, yeah. and a lot of that is just finding people that you have commonality with, finding uh, folks that, that you get along with that are people. And if you went back to, to Jen's thing about you know focus on the areas where you have the greatest potential or trinity of success, I, I mean, let's do business with people that we have things in common with, people we enjoy spending time with. Uh, because I think that generates a lot of uh, additional camaraderie and additional, uh, you know, abilities. I, right. I will tell you, like, for example, even brand new this morning, uh, I was having a coaching session with a client, and, and we were talking about, you know, regular weekly checking calls with agents uh, on Monday mornings. And I said, well, you know, let's take the, the, the focus and emphasis off of the next deal, and let's put it on helping them get a lot more deals. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of asking the question, hey, do you have any new prequals you need me to work today, uh, let's ask the question, how does your business look for November and December? Are you on pace lead-wise to get where you want to be by when you want to be there um, based on your lead flow? So there's only two ways to answer that question positively, right? One is, uh, you know, I had a great week, a, you know, fabulous open house, more leads than I can handle. Great. How can I help you convert more of those? Uh, or they had a, a, an off week. It was bad weather or whatever. And, and they were like, well, eh, it wasn't so great. I had an open house. Nobody showed up. Okay, well, how can we get you in front of more people who would benefit from selling or buying a home in the next couple of days and get them to start thinking more proactively because you're focusing on serving their need? I loved what you said, Jen, uh, through the webinar about shifting that mindset. And as you well know, that's a, a big passion of mine as well. Uh, let's yeah. see, a couple other questions. Well, um, when you're looking at the questions, I want to just say something else, Michael, is use this launch presentation to present to a plethora of realtors all at one time. You know, create a couple of these. Don't, don't ever have one seminar because you know what the realtors say is, I can't make it. So have several of them say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do launch. I'm going to do it three times. I'm going to do it on Saturday. I'm going to do it on Tuesday morning or Wednesday morning, whatever, and I'm going to do it on Thursday night and offer all of those and then get them all in front of you at one time. That will save you some time. It's more efficient. Uh, and then you're, you're viewed as the resident expert. And if you can get more of them to be in the room and invite their other friends, they're going to see that, that you're more powerful um, you know, as, a, as an individual. So I wanted to share that as well. The last thing I wanted to share, and I'll get to another question, is um, something I call 333 or past, future, present. You can ask the realtors when you're sitting with them or any of your partners, tell me about the last three clients that you worked with. Tell me about the deal. Where did you get the deal from? And then ask for the future. Who are the next three you're going to work with, or you're going to be meeting next week? And, and so you have a listing appointment, a rental, and another listing appointment. How did you get those deals? Because it will tell you about the, the type of business they do, how much activity they have, and where the sources of the business. You may discover that they're in a rotary. And maybe you want to present. You may, uh, may want to join. You may discover that they got it from someone, uh, you know, an attorney, and you're like, wow, I didn't know you had relationships with attorneys. Can I meet them? And then ask the present, you know, the deals that are working on now, and ask them, so you're working with, you obviously refer that to a loan officer. Why did you choose that loan officer? What do they do that's great? What do, they, what do you wish they would do more of? And how can I then be part of that? So 333. One, 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 however you want to do it. All right, so you have one more question because I'm yakking fast. Oh, that's okay. I, and what I was going to do is there was a question that came through about what is maximum acceleration, what do we do? And Jen, you mentioned a, a, a few minutes earlier in the program, too, that uh, about a strategy session opportunity. I just wanted to address that really quick before we hit the top of the hour. Uh, and then I don't know what your schedule is like, whether you can hang out for a few more minutes and do some kind of live interactive coaching with the guys that are still, uh, with the attendees that are still on. But basically it comes down to three key things. We offer three different levels of service to be scalable. We have virtual coaching programs uh, that are kind of packaged topic specific courses that people can get access to. If you go to our website, you can find out more information about uh, the, in our shopping cart, um, our online store, some of the home study courses that are available. Uh, you can also take advantage of, we do group and on-site workshops like, for example, we facilitate those perfect loan process workshops for a team. Uh, we can do on-site training, a half-day, full-day workshops. 
uh, that we can organize and coordinate on a kind of a, a, a la carte basis. And then, of course, we offer our one-on-one -on -one core coaching program. But any of those opportunities, we found over the years that the best way to really identify the value of coaching is to experience it. So. Uh, we offer a no-cost, no-obligation strategy session. It's a one-on-one -on -one program with one of our coaches. Now, keep in mind, we do have to kind of fill them on a first-come, first-served basis because there's only a handful of hours every one of our coaches have every week that they can afford to take those kind of sessions. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, you also, most of us are at at or pretty close to full capacity right now anyway yeah. with all the other stuff we all do, especially Coach Jen. Um, uh, you know, what she didn't tell you is she's kind of a serial entrepreneur and owns multiple businesses in addition to her mortgage practice yeah. or coaching yeah. practice or speaking practice or real estate management or a couple of farms, a winery, a, a <laughs> gemology institute, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff going on <laughs> in her life. But uh, Anyway, but if you'd like to take advantage of one of these strategy sessions, uh, simply just give us the best phone number and email address to contact you uh, so that we can coordinate the scheduling. Our, our team will get a hold of you and, and coordinate that event. Um, otherwise, you can go on the MaximumCoach.com slash strategy website and uh, get access to setting up for one of those uh, to begin with. Um, one last thing that I wanted to share with you is all of you have invested close to an hour now in your uh, of your time in this program. So what I want to do, like we do with many of these webinars, is invite you to put those ideas in action. I mean, the fact of the matter is, knowledge is power is kind of a myth. Knowledge is only really powerful when it's implemented, and Jen has shared that point with you many, many times. So long story short, there's four key things you need to do, and this is identified as part of some research done by Brigham Young University, that if you do these four things, you have a 95% or better chance of implementing what you've heard in this program. So take just a couple of seconds before you answer that next email or before you return that next phone call and create an action plan. What's the first thing you heard Jen talk about that you need to implement immediately? What are the action steps you need to take to make that happen in your business going forward? By when are you going to have those actions completed? And who are you going to share that action plan with and ask them to check in and follow up with you as you hit those milestones to make sure you're staying on track? If you do those four things, you have a 95% chance of achieving your goals. And if you don't have that accountability partner, then certainly reach out to us. Certainly take advantage of the offer to achieve, receive one of these no-cost, no-obligation strategy sessions. And, and we'll get you dialed in and ready to go uh, with making sure you've got that action plan in place. All right, there's one last question I wanted to kind of fire against you, Jen, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Um, a comment yes. from John talking about the fact that he, like many loan officers these days, works from a home office environment, right? And yes. how do you work that? You know, he's already bur uh, you know, bur burgeoning against a fairly high ceiling, 7 to 11 loans a month pretty consistently. So how does he coordinate that uh, with trying to bring an assistant into the mix? What would be your recommendation or suggestion in that type of situation? Um, well, John, thanks for the question. I, you know, I don't know that I can answer that question um, here. <laughs> I might have to do a, a, a strategy session with you. Uh, because what I don't know is where you need the assistance. Where assisting going to fill in? Um, I can give you, you know, some examples. I mean, it might be that uh, you're doing very well with seven to eleven loans. You're you're working from home, and so you're, it sounds like you're meeting your clients online. So that's that's nice and that's efficient and that's working for you. It might be that um, in order to take your business to the next level, you need more marketing, and that's what's holding you up. You don't have time to lick and stick stamps and and figure out thing, you know, figure out a marketing plan. It might be that it's not the marketing plan. It might be that you have more leads coming in than you know what to do with, and that 7 to 11 loans is just a small representation of what your total capacity could be if you were able to get to all those leads. So we have to do, just identify uh, what is holding you back. Where are you spending the most amount of your time in the minder or grinder segment that is holding you back from doing that? And then from there, we can identify what the actual job is. I think this is one of the things that loan officers do is that they just want to hire an assistant to hire an assistant. We have to really um, iron out what their roles are, and I have a great way of doing that um, because what you want is to have them in their lane, you in your lane, and not have any um, overlapping going on. And that's really why a lot of loan officers, when they try to hire assistants, they don't really have that identified. So everybody's just kind of doing each other's job, and things are falling through the cracks, and people are overdoing business. So. I'm not sure that I can answer that question without knowing exactly how your business is structured, um, but 
so hopefully that's a good enough answer. Please, you know, sign up for a strategy session, and I'll be happy to uh, go to, through that in detail with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay, so another question that came through here, um, uh, and this is actually from a uh, former client of ours, uh, asking the question, I have an assistant, has, still have trouble letting go and delegating. Uh, any advice for, uh, you know, and, and I, I think you have uh, some controlitis tendencies, too, in your history, yeah, Ms. Jen. Yeah, How did you overcome those? Yeah, we all do. You know, I, if we all set out in this industry, you know, with our face and name and our brand and our reputation, and so we kind of walk around with this, you know, um, invisible um, chip on our shoulder, you know, that they want us they need us to be involved in everything. They really don't. Again, if you have a, a strong system that provides a great customer experience for your client, really all they're looking for is the experience. That's what they're being sold on. Every client is going to tell someone else because of the experience that they had, not because it was Jennifer or anybody else. I mean, my gosh, when I go to closing, I go, well, what am I, chop meat? Because I go, oh, I love Marsha. Oh, I love Kayla. And I'm like, gee, what about me? But see, I presented and created and built that team that creates that great reputation that goes along. So you want to hire the, the right people. Um, so that's, that's one part of it. The other is you've got to identify the roles. They have to be deep, deep tranches of roles so there can't be any overlapping. That's probably the biggest thing is you probably haven't laid out and said, your job is this, 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 and my job is that, that, that. And I'm going to stay in my lane and let you do your job, and you're going to stay in your lane, and I'm going to trust and have confidence that you're going to do what what I've asked you to do. And you can certainly chirp in and chat and test, and that's a whole management cycle thing that we did a seminar on several months ago. You can look on YouTube for. Um, but but that's going to be the key thing. It, usually the problem is the loan officer not giving up uh, control is because there aren't clear identified roles, um, and we're the worst advocate for it. So that's what I would say. Give yourself clear, identified roles and make sure that they they own their part. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredibly sound advice. And guys, don't forget the fact that, that you have the opportunity to also leverage some of your business partners. One of the other great things about this program, and I'm, I'm so grateful that Jen was willing to share her PowerPoint with all of you, is you take these concepts and ideas and not only do you apply them internally in your business, but turn around and introduce these concepts and ideas to your business partners because in no small sense are they a part of your team uh, as you begin to work to develop that consistency of experience and, and enroll them and engage them in what they could do to work with you and leverage your team in helping them not have to worry about the things that are in their way that we can do a lot easier, a lot more efficiently for those business partners, which creates a greater synergy. Um, I love to do interactive kind of team building workshops with my business partners and, and helping clients do the same thing with their business partners because there's a lot of overlap there. Um, you know, where they're trying to do our job, we're trying to do their job, and we're kind of arguing about it sometimes. Um, it's always wasted time, yeah. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, you know, every ounce of time you invest in refining and improving uh, the efficiency and quality of your customer experience pays off major dividends in the long run. Um, and and I, I know Jen would agree with me on that point in that respect because we well, both built big teams. Facility. Yeah, that's the you and the launch is, you know, identifying what you can do to improve everything. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, any other final questions that you want to go ahead and post in here? Uh, Coach Jen, I know you've got a very tight schedule and a, a lot of things going. I appreciate you being willing to hang out with us here for just a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of give us a five-minute warning and, and say last call on any final questions. Remember, if you would like to take advantage of one of those strategy sessions, uh, again, no cost, no obligation. Uh, there are a limited number of them every week, though, so make sure you go ahead and post in the Q&A right now. Uh, if you'd like to take advantage of one of those sessions, uh, give us the best phone number and email address coordinate scheduling with you so our team can reach out to you and get that handled. Uh, otherwise, any of those are questions that you'd like us to address, maybe offline, uh, feel free to private chat with us here and post that in the Q&A here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, Coach Jen, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience today before, yep. we, uh, before we go ahead and, and close out and, and, and yep. hop off the platform yeah. here? 
Yep, absolutely. One thing is I hope that you have the best 2017 than in your business that you've ever had. I, I hope that you take to heart some of the things that we've talked about today um, and really address the consistency and laying out a real concrete plan and then working that plan as best you can. And I want to leave with um, Jim Rohn, one of Jim Rohn's quotes. Is he says that if, if you will build your success um, around your life, then later you can build your business. And, and the reason that this is so important is that we're not just developing a business plan, we're building a life plan. First we want to identify what we want to experience and feel in our lives and then we will build the business plan to ensure that we have those, those great goals made, met first. So I hope that you'll sign up for some strategy sessions because I can't wait to share with you more deeply anything um, that you have questions about and I hope you all have a great end of your second quarter and a or third quarter and you have a fantastic fourth quarter without any two minute Hail Mary call or um, Hail Mary Pat, <laughs> very end <boy>. great <laughs> yeah. football analogy yeah. love it love it love it love it uh, and for those of you sports geeks like me um, you know Jen's a great she loves football too so that's something else to know about coach Jen you'll have a lot in common with her if you like football and it's football season again we waited Yay. eight months for that all right guys Guys, thanks again for joining us on today's program. Um, if there's anything my team or I, uh, Action Acceleration, can do to help you grow your business faster, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. It's our only goal is helping you get from where you are to where you want to be as fast as humanly possible. And to that end, we'll do whatever we can to make that happen for you. All right, thanks again, Jen, for your time. I really appreciate you being able to hop on with us here. And 